Hi, good evening. Welcome along to Sky Sports News on another sad day for world sport. Germany and World Cup football legend Franz Beckenbauer was a true icon as a player, a manager and as a figurehead for his beloved Bayern Munich. Well, I'm delighted to say that Nick Powell's stayed on. Nick is a, a German football expert. You may or may not know that. So, so Nick Beckenbauer, um, those of us who are old enough to remember know this, but for those who don't, just how good was he? I think it's fair to put him up there in the echelons of uh, Bobby Charlton, who we lost so, so sadly uh, recently, Maradona, uh, Johan Cruyff, the, the really great football names of the, the last century. In terms of facts, he was one of only three men who won the World Cup as a, a player and as a manager. And how ironic that we've lost two of those three men in a matter of days, Mario Zagallo, the great Brazilian player who won the World Cup as a player in 1958 and 62, and then as a manager with that fantastic team in 1970. Uh, he passed away last week, and now Franz Beckenbauer, uh, who won the World Cup as a player in 1974 and as a manager in 1990, um, also uh, leaving us. He's been ill for several months, and one or two of his uh, former teammates, uh, Lothar Mateus amongst them, um, some months ago, um, expressing the hope that he would get well again, but without sounding very confident that that would happen. So this is not a, this is not a shock in Germany, but it is the lead story on every German news outlet, not just in terms of sport, but in terms of uh, all the news they've got. Uh, as a player, he was a phenomenon uh, because he he invented pretty much the role of the, the sweeper who could then come out and as uh, centre-backs do all the time now, but they didn't then, uh, could come out and play and, and could spray a ball short or long and had a great eye for a pass. Um, so he, in a sense, he, he invented that position. It, it's hard to imagine now what a rarity that was, but in the, without sounding too clichéd, it was in the days when centre-backs were mostly expected to be big, rough blokes, and it mostly well, was blokes in those it, days. They? Headed it and kicked it, and they were, you know, they were rough and tough, and no one worried if it went in row Z. Well, Franz Beckenbauer thought, we can do better than that. Yeah, and he absolutely did. Uh, you mentioned Sir Bobby Charlton. Of course, you know, the 66 World Cup final, they're up against each other. Just give us an idea of the respect between the two. Oh, hugely so. They, they met each other uh, at football gatherings, uh, both official and unofficial, uh, many, many times over the years. Um, there was there's great respect, really, wherever you went for, for Franz Beckenbauer. I'm, just gonna, there, there, I'm sure you've got um, tributes to bring us, but I've just received one, uh, which I'm going to have to translate as we go, from Borussia Dortmund. But they're Bayern Munich's great rivals, and, and Franz Beckenbauer was um, the embodiment of, of Bayern Munich. Uh, Borussia Dortmund uh, saying that they are mourning a great uh, German footballer. Rest in peace, Franz Beckenbauer. Uh, the Kaiser uh, will always remain unforgotten, uh, our thoughts are with his family and, and all who loved him. That Justin from uh, Borussia Dortmund. But you're right, um, Bobby Charlton and, and many others who um, were important to, to this game spent a lot of time with Franz Beckenbauer because he, he, he did everything. He was, he was a player and he was with Bayern for five years before he made his first team debut. So he, he was with Bayern as a, as a youth player. He was a player pretty much as soon as he retired, and he'd had some time in the United States, as others did, like Pelé in, in, in those days, came back and played a bit for Hamburg, then immediately transformed himself into a manager, was successful as a club manager, successful as a mass national manager, and then successful as an administrator, and was a major part in bringing the World Cup to Germany in 2006, which, let's not forget, England quite fancied having, thank you very much, and England have, have plunged in some great names into those attempts to win World Cups without any success at all. Franz Beckenbauer, not on his own, but he was a sub significant reason why Germany got what proved to be a very successful tournament in 2006. And broadening it a bit, a tournament that did quite a lot to convince people, including in this country, that Germany actually was an OK place. But it was a fun place to go. It was a really well-run tournament and people really enjoyed being there. And Franz Beckenbauer was absolutely delighted by that because he understood the success on many levels of that tournament had been. Um, 
I want to take you back to club football, Nick. Bayern Munich, it came out of every pore of him. Just to explain how important he was for that club. Uh, well, he, he was the reason, above all, that Bayern became uh, the great club that they are now. They won the European Cup, as it was then, the pre-runner of the, the Champions League, 1974, 75, uh, 76. Uh, it was Liverpool who took the, the title from them in, in 1977. Um, but he was at the, the forefront of that. Uh, and the team, like the, the German national team, uh, was built around him. Uh, he was always, if you go to Munich, uh, he was still uh, Der Kaiser, whatever year you went. As it happens, my, my brother used to live in a flat uh, in the same building where Franz Beckenbauer uh, had lived. And I just checked in with him now and he said it was a, a very unprepossessing, small, modest flat in, in Giesing. Um, so there was no, no trappings of greatness there, although obviously uh, he became a, a very wealthy man indeed and could afford to, to, to live where he liked. And he quite enjoyed the, the, the trappings of, of success as, you, as you, you, you got more used to it. But he began just as a normal bloke who just loved his football and was fantastic at it. He certainly was. That's how important he was to Bayern Munich. How important was he to German football? Well, as you said right at the start, he was in that... West Germany team who, and we're talking West Germany really in his, his time, so before the reunification in 1991, but he was in that uh, West Germany team who still think they should have won the 1966 um, Cup final against England. He had a, a more than OK game that day, but obviously overshadowed by the exploits of, of Jeff Hurst for, for England. But he went on um, to take Germany to the 1974 final where they beat Holland in a match refereed by an English referee, Jack Taylor. Um, and he was the greatest amongst a team of lots of great players, Uwe Zähler, Helmut Haller, um, Overart, all the rest of it, Tilkowski and goal. Uh, but he, he was the man. He was the star. He knew he was the star. He was fine with that. And it was, it was a kind of natural progression that he then went on to be uh, the German national team manager as well. Yeah. Um, what about Beckenbauer, the man? Give us an insight. You, you said, you know, enjoyed the trappings of, of success and whatever. Um, clearly a very successful man, but what was he like? I, I didn't meet him, so I, 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 I'm, I'm telling you what other um, German football uh, experts can, can tell you. Um, I, I, wouldn't say, I wouldn't say he was um, burdened by false modesty. He wasn't one of those people who didn't understand what had made him great. He, he, he knew he'd been a great player. Um, but he was still able to, to have a, a conversation with you. He was a, quite a regular guest on uh, German sports programmes and spoke with, obviously, with great authority, but was a, he, was a, he was a good talker. He, he, he made good telly um, in, in more recent... In fact, throughout his career, but increasingly, as he, as he became more and more confident in doing that, and that became more the way that he interacted with, with the German public and the German footballing public, having retired as a player and a manager. Nick? Just hold it there. Some of this you've already brought to us, but for those people joining us right now, there's been some reaction, of course, throughout the world. But we'll start with the Bundesliga, of course, where um, his beloved Bayern Munich plied their trade. And he says this, the Bundesliga family is devastated to learn of the death of Franz Beckenbauer, a true icon then, now and always. R.I.P. Der Kaiser. Yes, and Gary Lineker as well um, has spoken. The former England striker posted this tribute. He said, very sorry to hear that Franz Beckenbauer has died, one of the absolute greats of our game. Der Kaiser was the most beautiful of footballers who won it all with grace and charm, RIP. I'm just going to run you through the um, array of major trophies that Beckenbauer won. 16 major trophies in all as a player. Five Bundesliga titles, four German Cups, three European Cups, a European Cup Winners' Cup and one Intercontinental Cup. And as Nick has told you, he captained Germany to the World Cup in 1974 and, two years earlier, the European Championship. So, Nick, that is, um, that is quite an array of trophies. Um, Gary Lineker's tweet interests me. One of the most beautiful footballers who won it all with grace and charm. That's how I remember him, a Rolls-Royce of a footballer. Absolutely, because he, he, could, he could play... It, it, 
I don't want to make a fatuous comparison, but people talk all the time now about Trent Alexander-Arnold being able to play as a, as a right back and in midfield. Well, he could play as a defender and did, could and did play in midfield as well. Um, and the passing looked easy to him. Uh, didn't didn't matter whether it was short distance or or pinging a, a long one. Um, I'm just going to run through a few of the the things that in terms of stats that make him special. He's one of nine players who've won the World Cup and the European Cup and the Ballon d'Or. So only nine have won all three. Uh, he's one of those. Uh, he was twice European Football of the Year. I mentioned he's one of only three who've won the World Cup as player and manager. He was the first captain to lift the World Cup and the European Championship at international level and the European Cup as well. And when they named the World Team of the Century in 1998, he was in it. Of course, he was. They did a World Cup Dream Team in 2002. He was in that. He was in the Ballon d'Or Dream Team in 2020. So we've moved on a long way from his playing days. And he, he maybe didn't have, the around the world, maybe didn't have the stardust of Johan Cruyff or Maradona, but he was in that Dream Team and in 2004 was in the FIFA 100 of the world's uh, greatest living players. And he would have made that very comfortably. Indeed. Um, yeah. And you touched on this earlier as well. Wasn't um, prepared to just stay in Germany. A couple of spells with New York Cosmos in America and brought the game alive there. Yeah, it, it's, it's what a lot of players did in, in those days. George Best did it. Um, Pelé did it. And there was a... Uh, it was a kind of short-lived success. It didn't, they didn't, the, despite the influx of those players who received a lot of money for it, uh, it didn't at that stage uh, lift the, the f soccer to the level that um, the people like Phil Woosman, the great um, pioneer, hoped, a Welshman who made a career in the States, hoped that it, but, but it would do. But it, it just showed a, um, an interest in, in uh, expanding his horizons. Because he, he started off as a... It, something I should have mentioned before. He was, a, he was not a Bayern Munich fan as a boy. He was a fan of the other Munich club, Munich 1860, who were, back in the days of my youth, were almost the equal of, of Bayern Munich as a, as a club, but are now a couple of divisions below. They've, they've fallen a long way. But that was his team. Um, but he joined Bayern as a, as a youth player. He came from a working-class area and gradually uh, became more famous, more rich, coped with that fine. When Sir Bobby Charlton went, the whole nation was aware of it and saddened. Give us an idea of how Germany will react to, hit, to Beckenbauer's passing. Uh, I'd say almost exactly the same. As I say, it's, it's, the, it's the lead story everywhere in Germany. It doesn't matter whether you're from Bavaria or Munich or where you are in, in Germany. It's the first thing that everybody will say if they walk into uh, a bar or a restaurant or wherever or a public transport all around Germany tonight, that will be the, the first topic. It's their Kaiser, it's France. Um, He's gone everywhere. If you say Der Kaiser, that's, that's who you mean in terms of, of football in Germany. I don't know what the plans are. It's much too early to know what the plans will be for uh, funerals and memorial services and the rest, but they will be attended by the great and good, not just of German football, but of international football as well. Nick, thank you very much. Uh, Nick, our German football expert, um, giving us a bit of context around the really sad news that we have lost one of the great ones, yes. Der Kaiser, Franz Beckenbauer, has died at the age of 78.